Welcome back everyone. Well it's been ages since I made a video. As I indicated in the last video we moved our business from one office to another and my daughter also moved house the weekend before that and to be absolutely honest I've been pretty exhausted after the move. It turned out to be a bigger job than we first expected. But anyway, we're all settled in to the new building at work now and loving to death the extra space that we have and now are just working to fill that extra space with more people. And I'm looking forward to getting back into these projects. Now, the last video I did on the mono board, I'd done a little bit of research and was very, very frustrated with some misinformation on the internet and had sort of gone back to basics and done some extra research. Uh, one of the things that came out of that is I want to drive every MOSFET in the bridge circuits with its own pulse width modulated output. So I took a look at the microcontroller I was using, which is the Atmega uh, Uno microcontroller, and sort of thought this isn't really up to the task with what I need. So I've made some changes to the circuit, quite a lot of changes to the circuit actually, so I haven't been sitting here doing nothing, but it's just taken me quite some time to do the research and then get back into it. So in this video we're going to go through the new circuit design that I have for the monoboard electronics. Let's take a look at the video now and let's get this project moving. Okay, well I guess the first major thing that's changed is I've gone away from the Atmega 328 Arduino Uno microcontroller and I've decided to use an STM32. I've done this because I want more pulse width modulated outputs at higher frequency and using the Atmega chip I had just got myself into the situation where it was going to be difficult without using some maybe I squared C connected IO or something like that. The other thing is the Atmega chip is a 8-bit microcontroller and moving to the STM32, it's a 32-bit microcontroller so just more able to handle uh, what I need and a lot more outputs as well. So the circuit diagram, I've broken it up over uh, three pages, IO devices, uh, power stage and the CPU. Uh, CPU is fairly basic here. What I've actually done is uh, I've selected the STM32 uh, for a reason and that reason is there's a plugin for the Arduino programming environment which allows you to program the STM32 like an Arduino. It's not fully supported but I believe it supports everything I will need at this point in time and if you do a search on the internet for Arduino Blue Pill it will bring up a little development board using this chip. Now this circuit here is essentially that cut down microcontroller. So clock circuitry and it does have a real time clock on there. I don't expect I'm going to need it but I'm going to build it onto the circuit board anyway because once it's there I can use it with just simple code changes. If it's not there obviously it can't be used. Uh, power supply decoupling here, uh, this uh, is the same chip, uh, so U8.1 and U8.2 just with the power supply. Stuff split off to the side here to make it a little bit easier to follow. Reset circuitry, you can set up this microcontroller so that it can be programmed over USB just like the Arduino. 
However, straight out of the box, you basically program it through some serial I.O. pins and you actually move some jumpers around to put it in program and run mode. And I've just put those on the board because I'm not really worried about being able to do it over USB in this instance. Okay, so that's the microcontroller. I'll do a video on the actual code as we get closer and closer to finishing this and I'll sort of go through it in depth at that point in time. If we take a look at the power stage, some major changes here from the first video that I would have shown. In the first video with the bridge circuits, I was just using discrete transistors to operate the MOSFETs. I was happy enough to do that to start off with, but uh, when it came right down to it, I thought, no, let's just do this properly. So I got three MOSFET drivers, and you'll note that I was using P and N channel MOSFETs. I've gone away from that and are just using the N channel MOSFETs now with the actual drivers. And these drivers are uh, suitable for use with uh, the 3.3 volts of the microcontroller. And I'll probably do a more detailed video on each of these driver chips as well and how they actually work. Also, the current monitoring circuitry, it used to be just one main resistor and a voltage divider network off that. Look, I've gone away from it and I'm using one of these current monitoring chips which have quite a low, a very, very low resistance in fact. So I figure less I squared R losses, so less heat being generated and just a better solution all round. So again, I've included uh, that. And over on this side, a couple of power supplies. Uh, we need a 12 volt power supply to feed the MOSFET drivers and we'll be using that for some of the IO devices as well. And there's a 3.3 volt regulator there, which is required by the microcontroller. Uh, we're using buck converters for both of these, just to keep the power supply nice and efficient since we're running off battery. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual I.O. devices. First up, we have the MPU 6050. Nothing has changed there. It's still I2C connected to the microcontroller. Battery voltage monitoring so that we can shut it down without destroying our batteries. Had to change the voltage divider ratio because we're now needing to generate a 3.3 volt uh, analog signal. Whole sensors exactly the same. Now, I'm driving these off 3.3 volts here. I'm not too sure whether that's going to work rather than the old 5 volt signal. This is going to be a test case. And if it doesn't work, then I'd suggest a cheap and nasty uh, fix for that. I don't think I'll be putting a 5 volt regulator on there. It's probably just a Zena and resistor just to generate 5 volts to run those Hall Effect sensors. The programming port has changed. Before, we used to have the DTR being connected through to the reset. That's gone now because we don't actually use that with the STM32, we have to use the reset button and those jumpers. Uh, pressure sensor, on the old circuit there would have been an e-stop input, well I was going to do that via a pressure sensor on the actual device, so if you fall off, no pressure on the pressure sensor where you would stand, so it would stop the device. A couple of LED indicators will be driven by outputs direct from the microcontroller. Rear lights, I'm going to drive with a MOSFET using 12 volts. And same with front lights. Now, I've had a look at uh, some strip lighting that looks like it'll be really just fit for purpose for this. The other thing here is a piezo buzzer, I dare say. Uh, again, will be run from 12 volts using a MOSFET and just on that alarm terminal. So that covers off on all the changes that I've made to the circuit. Now it's just a matter of getting in and doing some testing and seeing how it works. I have ordered the majority of the bits that I need for testing. I certainly don't have all the components I need to build it. However, I have enough to start doing the testing of the, the power stage 
and I've also uh, ordered and received a blue pill which I'm going to use as a test bed before I go and order the microcontroller and start building up any circuit boards and things like that. So hopefully we can get things moving along now. Okay, cheers for now. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then please subscribe. And don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.